You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Italy have stuck consistently to a 4-3-3 since 2020. Roberto Mancini's side plays a fairly direct way with at least one, sometimes two, controlling midfielders. Italy like to play out from the back, drawing teams forwards before using the long passing of Jorginho, Manuel Locatelli or Marco Verratti to find their quick attackers in space or having isolated a defender. Their deeper build-up often sees one fullback staying deeper with the others pushing up. The more aggressive is often the left-back, while the right-winger maintains his width before cutting in field. One midfielder, usually the right-sided one of the three, pushes forwards into the half-space to support this. They score a lot from outside the box too, with Locatelli in particular posing a threat from half-clearances or balls played back from Italy's attackers. Defensively, the Italians press high against weaker teams, but settle into a 4-3-3 or 4-5-1 mid and low block. They are aggressive in individual deals, with one centre-back often pushing up to contest headers and are not afraid to break their shape to harass the opposition if they start playing it backwards. Italy's strengths lie in a quick, dynamic set of forwards. Domenico Berardi is a handful cutting in from the right, while Ciro Immobile has had yet another strong season in Serie A. They are able to control the tempo of games well with a good set of passing midfielders who can retain and recycle possession or go long. If there's a weakness, it's depth of quality at fullback. But Italy will be very strong contenders and arrive at the competition having topped their recent Nations League group and lost just twice in three years. Vladimir Petkovic's Switzerland side have focused on a three-man defensive system although they have used a back four twice since September 2020. The back three is the basis of how they use the ball, though. With the wide centre-back splitting to progress the ball upfield, generally shielded by a dynamic midfield double pivot. Switzerland tend to focus on attacking with width, using the back three or midfield largely to recycle the ball if attackers run down a cul-de-sac. The wingbacks are key, providing crosses but also cutting infield to support attacks in the box if a wide attacker drifts out. Switzerland's front three usually have a more orthodox centre-forward, Harris Seferovic or Mario Gavranovic, supported by two more fluid attacking midfielders who drop off, push up, drift wide or get into the box depending on the situation. Here, Sheridan Shakiri is key, often dropping off to switch play or ping balls into the channels, but the side have options for the other position. The Switzerland are patient and not afraid to play all the way back should an attack run out of steam. This, allied with their traditional defensive strength and physicality, means that they keep the ball well and are hard to break down. And they're a versatile squad. Dibriel Sau is an energetic presence in midfield, while Granit Xhaka provides bite and passing. But Switzerland can change this department by bringing in excellent players like Denis Sicaria or Remo Freuler. And while scoring is sometimes an issue for a relatively weak pool of forwards, Switzerland's resilience and ability at keeping the ball means that they won't concede many either. As they didn't in qualifying, conceding just six times from eight games on their way to topping a group containing Denmark and the Republic of Ireland. Shenol Gunesh has coached Turkey before, and in his previous stint, he took them to third place at the 2002 World Cup. This experience, coupled with a genuinely good squad, means Turkey will be a team to watch this tournament. They favoured a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-2-3-1 in recent games, and they play a compact, pretty counter-attacking style. They'll press hard if the opposition start to play backwards or are not very good, but against strong passing teams they are content to sit deep. The defence shielded by the excellent Okayu Kushlu, with limited space between the lines. In possession, Turkey like to bring it out from the back, especially if Chala Soyuncu is playing. They seem to want to draw the opposition in towards them, so they can then play quick vertical line-breaking passes towards their striker, with midfielders and wide attackers joining in. They're also good at working the ball through tight areas to then switch the play. And the squad is versatile too. Keenan Kerriman has played on both flanks and as a second striker, 
while Hakan Chalhanalu is a creative midfielder who plays centrally or wide. Turkey are an interesting mix, tough and tight in defence, expansive and tricky up top. With excellent midfielder Ozan Tufan, a threat joining attacks from deep, or with his long-range shooting. Turkey's ability on the break will test teams, as will the form of the aging but resurgent Barak Yilmaz. Their squad is a good mix of experienced and younger talent guided very ably by Turkey's most successful international coach. And while they'll likely concede goals, they should score plenty too. Wales have undergone a formational shift in 2021. Ditching the back four they used for most of the preceding year and returning to the back five system that saw them exceed expectations at Euro 2016. Head coach Rob Page has the benefit of a number of exciting young players in the squad too, with Premier League talents like Joe Roden, Dan James and Nico Williams now supporting established stars Gareth Bale and Aaron Ramsey. Under Page, Wales have shifted away from a more direct style, which saw a tight defensive unit looking to play long balls up to the significant aerial presence of Kiefer Moore. Moore is still a very useful focal point though, possessing a deft touch as he showed with a neat finish against Mexico. But Wales's general plan now sees Harry Wilson as a false nine in a fluid, tricky front three, with Bale often tucking inside from a flanking position to pull the strings more centrally and James bursting in from the other flank as a more direct ball-carrying threat. Bale can and does also stay wide. His ability to cross is excellent, and Wales get runners into the box well. Now there is still an emphasis on compactness defensively, with the 3-4-3 becoming a 5-4-1 in defence, but Wales now look to play quick, sharp passes forwards to break the opposition block, with mobile runners in the attacking positions allowing them to find space between the lines to link these attacks. Wales may lack the overall squad depth of the other teams in this group, and that makes them outsiders to advance, but their star power means that they are not to be underestimated. If you like this video, please subscribe to TIFO to help us reach 1 million subscribers. The Athletic is where the Manchester United reporters revealed the truth behind the club's Jadon Sancho transfer fiasco, where the Tottenham reporters brought you news of Gareth Bale's return before anyone else, where the Chelsea reporters told us three days before his sacking that Frank Lampard was on the verge of losing his job. And you can try it now for free for 30 days. See the link in the description.